My name is Laura Quinn and I've been working with Glass for 12 years. I first started off in NCAD in 2011 and in my first year there I was able to try out two different subject areas. So I chose sculpture and glass and as soon as I stepped foot into the hot shop in the glass department I just fell in love. We were put gathering glass from the furnace straight away, getting into it and the discipline that it required from the get-go just really made me fall in love with the process and the material. In my third year in my studies, I got to go and study in the States. I went to Southern Illinois University and I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to go to the Corning Museum of Glass to do a master class in flame working. And that's really where my passion for that process was ignited. So during my years of studying and even since then developing my practice, I've started to realize that the most important thing for me in my work is to connect people with glass. And I do this by making a variety of different things from wearable glass structures to unique interactive glass sculptures to even lighting designs. And more recently I've had the honour of having my work selected for the Ireland Glass Biennale. Currently I work as the Glass Technical Tutor in the University for the Creative Arts in the UK. In Ireland I was lucky enough to have many strong female glass artists to look up to and be inspired by from a very, very early stage in my career including Dr Caroline Madden and Roisin de Butler and this actually made a massive difference for me. I found when I started to travel internationally and talk to artists in different countries, particularly female glass artists, that this necessarily wasn't the case and they instilled in me this kind of confidence to not even consider that my gender could affect how I would work in studios and in the workplace and unfortunately I've found out that that's not the same everywhere. So I think I've been very lucky to have such inspiring female glass artists to look up to. To younger people considering a career in glass, you have to be prepared to work really, really hard. But in my experience, it's a massive community, but yet it's actually quite small. You can travel internationally just like I did, visit different studios, and you can get a lot of support from that global community. So if you want to have a career in glass or you want to be creative through glass, just believe in yourself and you can make it happen. My name is Padre Lam and I've been working in, in glass for over 30 years. It's been a very adventurous time I've had and worked in small projects, big projects, projects in Ireland, abroad. It's helped me travel, I've met amazing people and it's been an incredible cultural experience. My journey with glass started after school with a foundation course in the Dunleary School of Art and Design. I w then went on to do a diploma in craft design at the National College of Art and Design, which led me to choose and specialise in glass. I made this choice for a reason, apart from the amazing qualities that glass has as a material, because I wanted to leave college with a tangible skill. Having a tangible skill means that I had the possibility of being able to continue within the arts when I had left college. After this, I went on to complete a postgrad course in Briley Hill Glass Centre specialising in glass blowing. I then worked as a tra travelling glass blower going from country to country around Europe. While in Denmark, I started making glass plates and cutting them up to make stained glass pieces. A number of years later, I brought this skill back to Ireland and began making some domestic pieces for people's homes, including stained glass restoration. The good thing about stained glass restoration is you have to analyse how something was made. It's a bit like studying the old masters, so you learn an awful lot of techniques. The work I make now is quite complex and I use a whole variety of techniques from painting and staining and firing and etching. But when I started making stained glass, it was very, very basic. And the materials I used were, were much, much cheaper than the materials I use now. I use machine-made glass as against handmade glass. Um, these limitations, though, I think probably stood me well. If I was to give any advice to younger people ent entering the field of glass making, I'd say, in the early stage of your practice, you've got to be realistic. You may have to do other things to make ends meet, as I have done. When you work on a project that's paid well and that there is some profit, put some of that profit back into your practice. Buy materials, buy new equipment, upskill and improve your training. In my opinion, a creative life is a challenge on an ongoing basis. But this challenge is, is worth it and it has many rewards. I'm proud of the work I've made and I'm looking forward to making new work well into the future. My name is Alison Byrne and I've been working in glass for over 20 years. 
Believe it or not, my path to a glass career began in fourth year of secondary school. I'm dyslexic and although I wasn't diagnosed until much later in life, I struggled academically in school. I loved art, so I decided to look at creative jobs for my work experience. What was great was I found a stained glass artist in my town and she offered me a job straight after that work experience. I worked with her for four to five years, building up skills until I left Ireland to do a degree in glass design, glass blowing specifically in Wolverhampton. I went on to Bournemouth and Poole College where I did a postgrad in hot glass techniques. There are so many different techniques to try and master and I love techniques. I travelled and lived abroad for 10 years before I decided that I wanted to set up my own business back in Ireland. So then I resurrected my stained glass tools and I started practicing and experimenting and then I set up my business in 2016. I began teaching classes in stained glass and was able to develop my style. I sold my work in craft markets all over Dublin. I soon realised I needed more space so I found a bigger studio. I decided to produce design-led homewares, but I wanted to make them accessible, so I swapped out the coloured glass for clear to reduce costs. I started making lamps and wall pockets with geometric shapes using the clear glass, which people really loved. I absolutely love running my own business. There's great freedom and great satisfaction in it. My main challenge today is balancing my production work with my desire to do more creative, artistic work. I need the production work to finance my creative work, but I can get sucked into all of the production very easily. So now what I do is I schedule creative time into my week like an appointment that I cannot miss. A career in a creative industry like Glass can be tough, but the community here in Ireland is incredibly supportive and full of advice and help. So if you have a creative passion, it's never not worthwhile exploring that path and seeing where it takes you. My name is Rory Ledbetter and I've been working as a glass blower at Jerpoint Glass for 25 years. My dad was born in Staffordshire in the UK in the 1940s and he moved to Aura Force in Sweden in the 70s to learn how to make glass. Uh, once he felt he'd accomplished that, he moved to Ireland in the mid 70s. He met my mum and they settled down here in Jerpoint and started the business together. Secondary school was a bit of a struggle for me because I found it difficult to soak up information on certain subjects that I was less interested in. Um, I, was, I was very lucky to have some very understanding teachers and a very patient school principal. At 15 years old, in transition year, I was given the opportunity to uh, do some work experience at my old primary school. And then I also got the chance to come here to Jerpoint Glass. I quickly became a useful member of the team and also realised that it might be a pathway out of school which really attracted me as a lot of my friends had planned to leave that summer to get apprenticeships. So I, I think I've learned 99% of what I know about the craft of glass blowing from the guys who've worked in Jerpoint Glass over the years. Uh, James Long, for instance, was my dad's second apprentice. Between myself and James, we make 90 or 100 different pieces and James has been working at Jerpoint Glass for 43 years. He's probably one of the most adaptable and experienced glassblowers on the planet. So when it comes to inspiration and, and people I've learned from down through the years, James would be right up there. The advice I'd have for young people who are interested in a future career in glassblowing is to try and get a good understanding of the material itself and get to know the theory of glass and you know, get as much hands-on practice as they can. As time has gone on, I've realized that knowing the theory can hugely improve your skills. You can become quite good at making certain pieces in practice, but once you fully understand why you do certain steps in the process of making each piece, you will become a far more accomplished glassmaker. So I've been a glass blower for 25 years, and people assume that that makes me a master glass blower. I'd never call myself a master glass blower. I think that glass blowing is so multifaceted and so complicated that I'm not sure if you can ever truly master the craft, but maybe someday you will.